Hello everyone and welcome to another video with Cass on the Mizuma channel. So what I'm bringing you today is something really fun to play with, which I'm calling uh, Serial Panels. So yeah, this is a Serial Panel uh, and this is a generic display that can receive anything. Uh, so recently I showed you guys a very simple way to display characters and shapes using uh, hard-coded information. And the difference now is I still have hard-coded information, but now this thing can display anything really because the hard-coded information is not actually attached to the panel. So I have quite a few examples in here for you guys. And uh, yeah, let's see some, some action in here. So here you can see some of the things that I have. So chessboard pattern, bear shape, gear, uh, many things. So uh, let's just start with the basic one. So a, check, a checkerboard pattern should be useful to start with. So as you can see, the information is sent bit by bit. This is why this is called a serial panel, because it, it gets the, 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 the image gets sent to it and is rendered uh, block by block. And uh, yeah, this is uh, a old style panel. So each pixel is a two by two uh, little, little thingy in there. <laughs> okay, so let's see some other shape. Um, maybe yeah, the hashtag symbol. This is something that a lot of people should be able to recognize. Uh, and as you can see, when you send information to it, it will overwrite whatever is in it. Because you send information to it and it has latches that can store the information in and the information will stay there until something changes it. Uh, let's see the creeper face. It's, it's one of my favorites. <laughs> so kind of a inverted creeper face, really nice. Uh, the heart shape is also really nice. Uh, the heart shape is right here. So I'm thinking this could be used uh, for mini games. So a lot of people think that I'm trying to do computers in Minecraft, but uh, I'm actually doing components for future mini games. Uh, I've done some basic mini games in the future, but for some things that you want to do, you need some more complex stuff, which is not really the case of this one, uh, as I will show you. Uh, let's see if I had, uh, if I have it, at least one more interesting thing to show you. Yeah, maybe the ah oh, these stairs. <laughs> these stairs are pretty cool. <laughs> it's just a triangle, really, but uh, it looks like stairs. And if I, if I place the player here, like it can look like the my player is trying to actually climb the stairs. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to see with the F5 mode, but uh, yeah. And finally, the, uh, as, as an example, here is a locked padlock. So this could be for a really cool and fancy uh, password protected system. And then it shows you this icon saying that some, some area or something is locked. And once you unlock uh, the code by typing in something, uh, by the way, I have I have a video on it on my channel. If you want to know how to do combo locks, then it dis and it displays this new icon showing that the system is currently unlocked. Uh, I also, here I have more things stored, but those are the borrowing stuff, uh, which are just n numbers and yeah things that you would normally do with a seven segment display, but done uh, with this. So yeah, I'll quickly show you this by doing a uh, quick time lapse. All right, so you just saw all of the patterns uh, and yeah, there's this one as well, which is basically sending a bunch of zeros to the screen. We'll clear it and uh, yeah, it gives you the impression that it's turned off. Okay, so let's take a look at the redstone back here. Uh, you can see how I am storing the information and there are two ways of storing it, uh, which I will discuss briefly. 
so uh, yeah, this this thing down here is not the same as this thing up here. And you can see that I'm using shaders in this video, and that's because it gives a better contrast. And here is the actual panel. So yeah, we have this this blue section, which is basically what every everyone does for two by two pixel displays. Uh, and uh, here, the green circuit uh, is uh, is where the data is stored, and uh, the the red circuit is where data is processed. And uh, as you can see, the, the hard drives or the ROMs are connected to the display using a single wire. So this is why I'm calling this the serial displays because, well, you can transmit information serially to it. And this is just something that can lock this display. And uh, yeah, why am I locking a single display, right? Maybe I have more than one display that I can connect together and see how it works. Okay, but before we see that, <laughs> before we see that, uh, let me show you how I am uh, encoding information in here i wish there was some uh, some better like a, a simple example to show you um yeah let's let's take this one on the side maybe so the unlocked padlock okay so the way it is is uh let's try to memorize a little bit of this picture so you can see that with the first line it's uh, all the pixels are turned on and on the next line the first pixel and the last pixel is turned on. Just, you just need to remember those two lines in here, and then I can show you this. This is how I encode information in here. So this first bit is the wake up bit. It sends to the panel, because the panel is never, it, it never knows when information is coming in. So we just send a bit to it, so it knows that information is coming. It's very important in this case here, when we want to clear the screen, because we're sending a bunch of zeros. So how can it detect a bunch of zeros, right? So we, we wake up the device first. Okay, so then it starts to send the information. As you can see here, this is the first line. So this first five blocks in here, are first bits that are going to be all set to one. And then, if you remember the padlock shape, it has the first bit on, then the last bit on. So this is how I split things. So for every line, I have uh, a line of five things that I have in here, and I can tile all of those together in a very compact way. Uh, in here, I don't, I don't even have to use a lot of redstone dust. There's, there's this way. This is, the, this was my first prototype. But as you can see. Uh, once you've built it, you have to encode the information and then you will never see it again because everything gets <laughs> inside the build. So yeah, if you want to change things, it's going to be very difficult, which is why I created the second type of hard drive. Uh, so this one uh, is very, uh, very, a lot more expensive than the first one and bigger as well. So as you can see, this one is just one, two, three, four, four layers. And this one is one, two, three, four, five, six layers. Uh, and the thing is, everything that you see here is just all the same. Everything is turned on, as you can see. Well, not really. Those are just things that will send the signal. And this is a much more, uh, a better expandable pattern to, to send the data out instead of using this alternating pattern. Uh, and the data are actually those redstone blocks and solid blocks that you see up here. Uh, so I can give you a very solid example uh, by showing you this last one because it's easy to edit. So it's an F. Okay, so yeah, uh, uh, you can see that the F letter uh, has those two uh, legs in here. And I can, I can shorten this leg now by editing the data. And uh, in this case, I would have to, to break some things in order to get to, to reach uh, the part of the hard drive that I want to edit. But with this one, I don't have to, or I'm, I'm keep calling it, uh, I'm gonna keep calling it hard drive because it looks like a hard, uh, a hard drive, but it's actually ROM. All I need to do is to change the, the blocks in here and those are all exposed. I just have glass on top to better organize myself. So let's try to do that. Okay, so uh, those are the first five blocks. Okay, so we are looking to edit the uh, one, two, the third line, right? Because it edits from the bottom to top. So the third line is what we're looking to edit. So not this one, not this one, it is this one. So here's the, the little lag that, that we are trying to edit. I wanna make it a little bit shorter. So I'm gonna place a redstone block in here. Redstone blocks are where uh, data, the, the lamps will be off and uh, solid blocks are where the letters are going to be, or the, the, the pixels are going to be on. Okay, so uh, because I, I, I changed the, the placement of this redstone block, uh, we have to update it first because 
uh, those here are all droppers and droppers can get budded. So this is how this entire system works. Um, a single pulse goes through the end because we have to send 25 bits to the five by five panel. It makes sense, huh? Makes sense. Uh, and uh, yeah, we, we so the, the droppers that are not budded, <laughs> that are not budded like in this case, will send a signal and the, the the droppers that are budded will not send a signal but this guy uh, it doesn't know that it's budded for now so the first time we press the button it's going to be uh, a mess usually because it interferes with other things that get updated around it so as you can see this this is a mess now but uh if we press the button now uh, every time we press this button now uh, we will render something correctly so yeah, now we have the correct F and we removed this piece of the leg. So, uh, as I said, the second type of hard drive is a lot more expensive, but it's really easy to add it. And uh, it's probably better if you want to do this uh, in, in a creative map. Okay, time to show you the big guns. Behold the display of displays. What you're looking at, ladies and gentlemen, is a grid, is a 5x5 five five grid made out of 5x5 five five serial panels that can all be controlled either individually or in groups. So in total, we have 625 pixels at our control. Uh, and what you see right now is just random stuff that I decided to, to do in here just to show you that you could be doing letters uh, look at the A and look at the G. The letters don't even have to have the same size. Look at the M and the numbers and symbols. Oh, you can do everything. Uh, and here are the controls. The controls are really bad, to be honest, uh, because at some point I just realized that I'm doing a massive project, project just to show you an example of how to use a very small thing in a very large scale. So let's go to the demonstration, guys. All right, the first thing I want to do is just select a panel. And the selection with the way I made it is very confusing. <laughs> okay, so I want to select something that is on the fourth row. So it should be this one and it's the A. So the A should be here. Uh, I, I put the coordinates in here, guys, in case I get confused or if, if you get confused, but yeah. It takes a long time to do the selection, but you will see that under the letter A, there is a dotted line, which means that this cell is selected. Okay, so now I can't send anything there. Uh, for instance, uh, and in this case, I don't have anything hard-coded in here. I can just create uh, my own shapes using these levers in here. So uh, for now, all of those are turned off. So if I send... Uh, this data uh, yeah the data should get there it, it shouldn't take too long to get in there so it will clear the device so i just erase it one letter <laughs> in there so i can maybe try to draw an x instead so i will do that so the first layer of the x should be this and then this this is the middle of everything uh oops this should be like this 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 and now let's send the data to the selected cell And wait a little bit so the serial transmission is very consistent and uh, yeah it's not slow at all it is it, it's just that this thing is really massive okay so we have an axe there <laughs> that's a pretty cool huh okay uh, we can uh, click the button again to remove the selection and this guy uh, tells us that we can do another selection although the, the display still shows that this thing is selected it's not actually at this point so uh, now let me show you uh, that we can actually do multiple selections so let's go for this row in the middle in here and select uh, three elements at the same time so I'm going to select this one uh, and this one and this one so you will now be able to see three dotted lines under the three symbols uh, or under the, the three tiles in the middle okay so what can we do now uh, let's do something boring let's just do a small square yeah let's do a, a little block like a minecraft block. i'm not suggesting anything uh, just a small block like there's a three by three solid block and then erase those all right i think this is all correct and now we can send the information let me give you guys a good view of what's going to happen
Ta-da! <laughs> uh, and as you can see, all the three cells got updated at the same time, guys. Yeah, and this is basically how I, I drew those borders in here. I, I did a selection for this tile, this, and this. And then I selected those three tiles. And then I sent a vertical line. And uh, yeah, everything got, uh, got shaped uh, in, at the same moment. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, you can keep. Let, let's search or alter one of these borders because some of you guys might be thinking that those are fixed elements uh, when they are not really. Okay, so it got selected. See, <laughs> so I can change it as well. Uh, let's maybe. What can we do there? Let's do. Let's let's uh, draw a little X. So just erase this. Erase this. We uh, yeah we have already the the big X. Let's let's do a small X now and send it Ta -da! <laughs> yeah guys this is pretty amazing come on come on this is awesome guys <laughs> okay uh, so how this works so here i just have uh, a serial encoder that i that i showed you guys in the past i believe i'm not sure <laughs> Uh, and here is a uh, pulse length encoder. I could have used a like decoding the addresses to the, the tiles using serial as well, but I, I just wanted to finish this project. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I got lazy with uh, the back of this thing as well. Uh, hopefully some of you guys will be impressed by how compact this thing is, considering all it does, right? Uh, so yeah, uh, all that you see up until the red thing are the serial panels themselves. And then uh, this, the messy stuff that you see here with the glowstone blocks and everything else is me getting really tired <laughs> and hooking this up in whatever way I could. But yeah, here you see 25 displays all together. And uh, yeah, of course I will be using this for doing mini games and really, really amazing things in Minecraft. And you can do this too uh, if you want. All right, so here's the panel by itself. So yeah, as you can see, very compact for what it does. And uh, it's perfect for world edit as well, because as you know, some things fail when you try to copy and paste and clone and stack and everything. So yeah, as I told you, this section just draws uh, pixels or maps information to pixels. This here is actual word, actually where the information is. It comes from the green circuit. And this is the input, so uh, anything that you want to input to, to the system should come to a wire that gets in here. Uh, and then the signal travels uh, internally and then it gets inside the circuit, which is the only part that gets a little bit tricky to uh, during the building process. But other than that, the entire thing is uh, very easy to build. It looks complicated, but it's actually easy to build. Uh, and the repeater lock system uh, is something that I have demonstrated before, but I have uh, immensely simplified now. The storage tower in here will basically make sure that every line gets uh, updated in the right moment. And uh, this thing is a little bit more complicated than it should be. Because, for instance, I could do a pattern where I just run a wire and the pixels get updated like this. And then on the next line, they go back and then forth. But then the encoding process would be really annoying because you would have to think uh, forwards and, you know, the, the inverse of things sometimes. And I, I made sure that the encoder is also really easy to make uh, and, uh, yeah, put the strain on the decoder, which is the display itself. All right. So here, uh, yeah, we have this combination. Uh, I struggled to make this vertical. <laughs> it would be a lot easier if, if the, the droppers would be horizontal, but then the, the world edit messes it up. But vertical, uh, it always gets it right. So inside, we need to have a fern in here. This is this is what you need to be attentive. I will do a block by block tutorial for this, but I don't have time for this in this video. So here is another setup if, in case you want to test it, because some people might not know how to build the, the encoder. So this is how you build the silent encoder. So here is a blank one, so you can add any bits that you want in here. And as you paste the, the units, they will all come locked like this. So you have to unlock them to actually use them. I'll do a quick demonstration here. So if you press the button as it is, it will not do anything because uh, yeah, it's not sending any data. But I can create uh, a checkerboard, or checkerboard pattern just by alternating these. Uh, 
this is probably messing the panel at this point because the, because the panel is not locked see it's getting data so yeah the panel is a little bit messed up but th that doesn't matter it fixes itself so if i press the button now it's sending the information back there and here we can see the checkerboard pattern so yeah so this, this map will come with this simple example it will be blank when you download it uh, and the schematic is also really simple to load all you have to do the schematic will also be uh, available in the download uh, in the download map so you can just do scam load five by five uh, oops uh, serial display like this and it will paste under your feet like this so yeah this is how it comes and then you can paste another one right next to it so let me do that Yes, and they can be tiled really close together with one block in between. Uh, and then, of course, you can keep doing this vertically. There is a separation layer down there. Uh, and uh, back here, don't forget that uh, th these are all locked so that if you have an array of tiles, you can unlock the one that you want to uh, actually control. All right. Uh, if you guys want a structure for this, let me know in the comments. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. It was a lot of work, guys. Uh, and I hope this is going to be fun for you to play with guys. Thank you very much for watching. Your support has been awesome lately. See you soon. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.